Hello there good people, what is up? Welcome to this channel, my name is Marco and this is the first video in this video series dedicated to showing my projects from super super beginner to more complicated stuff. It's going to be a series of several projects where I'll go over what I consider must do for self-taught programmers who like to, you know, start learning how to code and learn gradually, step by step. If you wanted to know more about the rationale or the reasons behind this video and get to know what I think of milestone projects, well then don't, don't forget to check the video out, it should pop up somewhere above me, right here. Now, for today I wanted to present you a project that has been probably one of my first projects, maybe not the first, but one of the first projects, and it might seem very easy at first, and it actually is, but believe me, it is super, super useful. What am I talking about? I'm talking about random string generator. There are tons of ways you can do this. There is really not any right or wrong. I'm gonna show what I think it's best and best practice. And I'll also share what I learned using this code in real projects. You might obviously wonder, Marco, why would I need this? More often than you realize, you'll find yourself having to write a piece of code just like this one. You are creating an app and you want to generate a random token for a user or something else, you're gonna need this. You have a website and you want to create API keys, you're gonna need this. You are working on a URL shortener, you're gonna need this. You want to generate a URL, a temporary URL for a password recovery, you guessed it, you're gonna need this. As I said, a lot. So enough with the talking, let's get into it. All right, all right, all right. So let's start with a file. I have this generic function, which is this string generator function here. And I'm just gonna create a random string with letters and numbers. So the first thing I need is actually an alphabet, what I can call an alphabet. In this case, as I said, I want uppercase letters, lowercase letters, and numbers from zero to nine. I'm not going to include any symbols for now because some URLs, I mean, if you're going to use this for a URL, they don't really like symbols. For example, underscore, colon, semicolon, question marks. So I'm not just, I'm just not going to include it. All right. So as I said, lowercase letters, uppercase letters and numbers. Okay. The next thing I want to do is to create an array to initialize an empty array, and I usually do it like this. You can just do it with an array. I like to do it like this, especially the first time. Now, why do I want to create an array? This array will receive all the different letters, and then at the end, eventually, I will just join them all together. So, right now, I just need to provide a simple loop, which looks like this. Now, this is a very simple loop. We go over the length, and this is basically the length of the string that I want, which I will specify in the argument of the function. And since I want a default value, I'm just gonna put 24. So by default, I'm gonna have a random string with 24 characters. So this loop will go over the 24 characters, and here uh, 24 is not considered, but since it starts, from zero, I'm gonna have from zero to 23, which is basically 24 iterations. Every iteration, I will basically pick an index, a random in index. And how do I do that? I use this method. The math.random is included in standard JavaScript. And what it does is basically gives you a number between zero and one, and one is never included. To get a number between like zero and the length of the alphabet in this case, I need to multiply it for the length of the alphabet. Now, one is never included. So you might think, well, if this string, if the alphabet is long 30, I'm never gonna get the last one because it's never included. That's not true because indexing works differently than actual length. Length is always one more because it gives you the number of elements that are in a collection. In this case, this may be 30 characters long, but the last position is gonna be 29 because it starts from zero. 
So if I multiply a number from 0 to 1 by the length of the collection, I'm never going to have 30, but that's okay because I don't have uh, an element at position 30. What I want to do when I get this random number, which is going to be a floating number, so 1.23478 blah blah blah, I'm going to floor it. And the floor operation is basically it's going to give me the lowest of the two ends. So if it's 4.5, it's going to give me 4 instead of 5. So out of this, I'm always going to receive an integer. And this is exactly what I want because the index must be an integer. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to push the character that is at position random index in the alphabet. I'm just going to push it to the array. So this is going to give me an array of 24 elements, which are going to be letters taken from this alphabet randomly. And what I'm going to do when I get out of the loop is actually I'm going to join it. And what this does, it basically gives me back a string. And this string would be just, you know, all the elements joined. That's exactly what it means. And then I just return the code. Now you might wonder why I'm reassigning this variable and that has to do with a memory management because right here I'm creating a new array and I'm populating it with 24 characters now but it could be 30, it could be 100, who cares. And every time I call this function I don't want a new array all the time occupying memory. So I'm just going to destroy it and give it to the, the string so that the array doesn't exist anymore in memory. So now this should return what I want. Let's console log the result of this. I'm not going to provide any argument here because the length is has a default. So we should have out of this, if this works, we should get a random string with 24 characters. Let's see if this works. I've called this random string. Yep. All right. Yep, as you can see, this is a random string and it has 24 characters. And if I wanted less or fewer, I could put 8. Let's see what happens if I put 8. I have 8 characters. And it's always going to be like a random string. Now, this has been one of my first projects when I start, you know, learning how to code and etc. I did it with uh, with Python at the time, but it works the same exactly in uh, for JavaScript. It's, it's basically the same concept. One suggestion I have is to not dismiss uh, this project just because it's easy. I mean, it is easy, but when you're starting, I mean, I was, I had started probably two months before or three months before, and this was the first thing I did. And I didn't do it like this. Now I'll show you how. The first time I tried, I actually used a string. So I initialized an empty string and then I kept adding in the loop. Instead of pushing to the array, I kept adding to the string the new character. And this is a little bit, let's say, I don't know, quicker or it's more intuitive. I'm not going to do this now because I think this is the optimal solution because I don't like to change, I don't like to mutate immutable objects. Now strings are immutable objects. Arrays are not. So in this case, I'm just changing and modifying an array, which is a mutable object, which is meant for that, instead of kept changing the string. Because if you did it like initializing the empty string and then adding every iteration, what happens is that you're going to basically destroy the old string and creating a new one every time. Because, as I said, strings are immutable. So you just, you're not going to change the string. You're going to destroy the old one and create a new one. And usually I don't like to, as I said, change immutable objects. This is why I think this is the best solution, or the, the most efficient. All right, this is the end. The project works, so mission accomplished. Now, let me share with you one more thing that I've learned using a code like this in a real project. In a real project, I once wanted to create a simple code six digit code, you know, like the one you see on Google or GitHub, nothing fancy, like a security code. So I would use only digits instead of the whole alphabet. And since it was a number, this is how I wanted to store it as a number, as, a, as an integer. So after creating the random 
code, the random string, I would convert it using parse int from JavaScript or just int if you're using Python. I was using Python at the time. Now, here comes the problem. I noticed that one every nine or 10 codes, there was one five digit code. I was shocked. How could it be? I mean, it is such a short script. I mean, is there something wrong in the loop, in the for loop? Am I doing too many or too few? Am I not counting something? I mean, what is it? Let me tell you that it took me almost an entire day to figure it out. And when I did, I felt very, very, very stupid. So obviously, if the random method works, once every 10, the first number in the random series is going to be a zero. Now, if you convert a number with a leading zero, well, that number would be removed, of course. I mean, for example, if you had zero, one, two, three, you parse it, the computer is smart, more than I am, for sure, and it would give you one, two, three. Why not? I mean, that is the integer part. And if we really wanted to do the math, there might be possibilities, probabilities of having two leading zeros, okay? And in that case, you'd have a four digit code, as I was getting sometimes. How many times? Well, you just need to count the odds. And for that, you just need to multiply it. So what are the chances that you have the first leading zero? It's one in 10, 0 0.1. The second one is 0 0.1 as well. Multiplied, you get one in 100. And guess what? One every under code, I had a four digit code. I mean, I was just going insane, believe me. That was a nightmare. So if I learned something from it, it's just don't even bother. I mean, just use it as a string. Just use a simple string. After all, a string is a string. Don't worry about types, about parsing it. Nobody cares. The database don't care, you don't care. Checks work the same. Logic is basically the same. So there's really no need to overcomplicate it. Well, this is the end, unfortunately. Thank you very much for watching. And I really hope that you could learn something and enjoyed this video. If so, please leave a like so that more people can see it and comment for your questions or any suggestion you might have. I really hope to see you in the next milestone project, so make sure to check it out. And you'll see that slowly but relentlessly, I will get to more complicated stuff, trust me. So as always, stay tuned for more. Bye bye.